One of the most important factors desired in a relationship is trust. Trust means that we can be vulnerable with that person. It means you can gift them with the most preciousness of you. That part of you that is difficult sometimes to allow somebody in. It's the belief that you will not be betrayed and that they will support you in your in, uh, vulnerability. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath, and I love helping people with natural remedies. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years because they work. So uh, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you like this video and give me a thumbs up if you're watching it by YouTube and that you share with others or give me a comment. I love uh, hearing from you. So during the month of December, I am focusing on being human. And one of the traits of being human has to do with trust. So it means sharing concerns, vulnerabilities, and hurts with someone to assist in the healing process and also to build stronger relationships. When we've been abandoned, judged unfairly, ridiculed, shamed, or basically not heard, we withdraw and don't want to share ourselves. To trust somebody with your vulnerabilities is the deepest kind of intimacy. Some people confuse sex with intimacy, but sex can be the opposite of intimacy. For a woman, climax is difficult without trust because to fully enjoy the experience, she must be vulnerable. The best part of marriages revolve around trust, knowing that someone is in your corner, no matter what. This person understands the gift you've given them with your trust. So let's see if I can get my screen to, there we go. Honesty is essential in a relationship, but the fear of consequences may prohibit an individual from trusting their partner to listen and fully support. When you are anxious about their reception, it's terrifying to consider revealing your deepest feelings, hopes, or dreams. For a successful relationship, one must push through the fear to honesty. So these are two books of many uh, written by the Gottmans. John and his wife, Julie, have courses on being human and trusting and what it means to have a really good relationship. So they say for a successful relationship, one must push through the fear to honesty. And this is the hardest part because we have no idea on how we're gonna be heard. If each person understands that what they are going to say is from a place of love and concern, then it, is helpful and the open discussion can be more honest. And if you're looking for something long-term, this is one of the cornerstones for a good relationship. So one of the ways you can do it is after you hear something from your partner that may rile up some emotions in you, pause, take a breath. If you can wait just a minute before you react to what that person said and try to digest it. And on the other hand, if you're telling somebody something of importance and divulging something in confidence to that person, allow them the time to 
digest what you've given them. You've lived with this for a certain amount of time. And that person is just now being exposed to this. And it may take them a few minutes. So allow them, be gracious in allowing them the time it takes. To avoid all hurt is impossible. So both parties must be attuned to having meaningful sharing. Now this comes from the Gottman's website, which I will link um, to this particular area of the website in the description below. But they call this attunement. So in other words, be aware, be aware of that person's attitude. Uh, if somebody's had a hard day, it is not the right time to hit them with something that is of importance to you. Um, so they go through this whole uh, section of tuning toward tolerance, understanding, non-defensive responding. In other words, don't lash out when you're hearing something for the first time and and you're upset with it and then to have empathy to make sure that that person understands that what they've shared with you is a gift uh, of confidence and both parties must be willing to come from a place of love and concern for that other person. You just simply don't want to blurt out whatever it is that you want to share with that person and not understand the circumstances of what that person is dealing with. So um, another author that I really, really like, I, uh, she has a lot of videos, then you can go to her website, uh, BreneBrown.com, and there's links to the different lectures that she's given. But she has something called Braving the Wilderness. So Braving um, is uh, an acronym, and it stands for, uh, B is for boundaries. And boundaries mean, can I trust you to be clear about what is okay and not okay in this relationship. In other words, it's a bond between two people. Uh, can I trust you to understand and respect my boundaries? Are you willing to say no and respect my need to say no sometimes? Because yes isn't always the answer. No may have to be, or maybe for now, or no for now. So it's all about creating this trust atmosphere and boundaries are the first thing that have to be considered. Both you and the person that you have a relationship with have set boundaries that what is okay with you may not be okay with them and understanding where they come from is important in relationships and that's how you build trust is that you know okay this is not okay with them and this is not an area i cross with them um, for example some people don't like to be uh kidded about their hair so you understand this is a sensitive boundary for that person and you don't cross it. If you respect that person, you simply don't cross that boundary. Maybe they have issues. Maybe they've been teased a lot when they were younger. Now, the second one is R. R for reliability. Will you follow through and do what you say you're going to do? This is huge because in order to establish trust, you must be able to rely on that person. And if you can't, you need to question whether this relationship is really where you want to go. And sometimes we say, well, I'm okay with that. 
but think of the long term. If you want a relationship like a marriage, do you want that as a long term thing that you can't rely on that person? It's really not going to work very well if that's what you have to keep saying to yourself, oh, this is who he is. Um, oh, I'm okay with that. Well, maybe it's something like the person's never on time. They're never on time. If you're okay with that person never being on time or that being an issue, you really need to make sure in your heart that you're really okay with that and not be mad at that person every time they're not on time. Maybe they can make an effort to be more on time. Maybe they can seek help in a professional way that time management is a thing that they have struggled with. And so there may be a, a need for professional help in that, but you need to be able to count on each other. When things are tough, they're the person you wanna be able to go to and uh, trust that they're gonna be consistently there for you. And the A is accountability. Can I trust that when you make a mistake that you will own it, that you will say, I'm sorry, that was wrong and I will try to do better or that you will somehow make it better. Uh, you apologize with meaning and you make amends. That's what accountability is about. And am I willing to hold myself accountable for the mistakes I make? you know what, we're human. That's part of being human is that we make mistakes. That's really one of the ways we learn is by making mistakes. But when we make a mistake that harms another person, that's when accountability comes in. Don't blame somebody else or something else or whatever. Take the responsibility of your part in whatever happened. V is vault. Now, vault is not like jump vault. Vault is something you hold sacred. So somebody tells you something in confidence and they're asking you, please don't tell anybody else. That's a vault. And there are times when you're in a relationship and somebody else has put something in your vault. The person you're in a relationship with must understand that this is a confidence in your vault that you have not the, the ability to share with them at this time. And they should be okay with that. There should be some things that you hold sacred that it, the person is okay with that and that's both of you so um it's there are, like <laughs> there are so many relationships that are ruined because somebody wants to hear it all they want full disclosure or whatever but you're not able to share that because this person has said please don't tell anybody else. They don't want to share that vulnerability with somebody else. It's their thing. And if they want to share it, fine. Then you can be a group sharing that. But this person is sharing a, a sacred truth with you that you should honor. And that's what vault means. So integrity is, can, can I trust that you will act from your integrity, including choosing courage over comfort, choosing what's right over what's fun, fast, easy, and practicing your values and not just saying them. So integrity is not words, it's who you are. People can trust 
that what you say is true and honest and that you're not just spouting something or then later on say, I was just joking. No, that's not acceptable behavior in a relationship if you want trust to be a cornerstone. So N is non-judgment. Do I know that I can fall apart and be in a struggle and pain and that you won't judge me, that you'll just hold me, that you won't tell me what to do or try to fix it, just really be a sounding board and not, because especially women need a sounding board. They just need to like spill the beans and have somebody say, it's okay, you're okay, you'll get through this. Not, here's how you fix it, because that, <laughs> they don't, they're not looking for a fix. They personally can fix it themselves. It's just that right now the pain is so great, they wanna share that pain with you, and then they can fix it. Now, if they ask you to help fix it, that's another story. But non-judgment means, do I trust that you will reach out to me when you are also in pain and struggle so that I can be there to support you? So it's basically, I support you, you support me. And are we able to regularly offer and ask for help from each other without any condemnation or without somebody saying, you're so helpless. You know, that doesn't help in the building of a relationship. And the last one is generosity. So where that makes up the word braving. Generosity, will you assume that my intentions are good and when you're not sure, will you check it out with me? In other words, I'm coming from a place of love and I hope that you also are receiving what I'm sharing from a place of love. Can we make generous assumptions and interpretations of ourselves and others in terms of words, behaviors, and actions? Teaching children to have open and honest discourse may be the most important thing we teach them. It will be the compass with which they base their life on, not just us, but with themselves. Often we are not, we don't trust our thoughts. We justify falsehoods because it is easier, but in the end, they are destructive and erode character and they keep us from joy. There are people who do not deserve our trust, people who intend harm, whether it be bodily or emotionally. They do not deserve the precious gift of trust. Learn how to determine whether a person has your best interest at heart. This is a marvelous attribute to teach children. It's more about getting in touch with your feeling brain than it is about logic. Logic will sometimes talk us into a relationship that our feeling brain is warning us to stay away from. The feeling brain, or what is referred to as the amygdala, is attuned to our instincts and these can be trusted more so than our thoughtful brain. So the prefrontal cortex is our basically thinking brain. And a lot of times we'll talk ourselves into certain things. And we should have listened to our instinctual brain to begin with. So, Certainly, the overuse of alcohol and drugs affect two very important parts of the brain. In the prefrontal cortex, they hijack decision-making, and the amygdala, they skew emotions. They may exaggerate anger, depression, sorrow, or other emotions that are non-productive when establishing trust in a relationship. Sugar can also disrupt behavioral responses, especially in children. Be aware of what one is eating and check on, put a check on it. If they're being 
angry or if they're being disruptive, look at what have they been eating? When was the last time they ate? Because hypoglycemia can be a huge factor in the exaggerations of emotions, whether someone is too sensitive or too quick to anger. Um, look at what they've eaten. Maybe you need to improve their nutritional um, input. If someone has uh, to numb their feelings in order to have a conversation that is hard for them by doing drugs or alcohol, they need to seek professional help. They need to have this conversation with somebody who can steer them in a more productive manner. There are couples therapy that can help show how to have these productive conversations about sensitive subjects. And I'll leave a link in the description below on some areas that the Goodman suggest. So first, understanding what you want out of a relationship is the main consideration. And then if you both want similar outcomes, you're not going to want the same things, but the big things. Make a list, especially if you're going into a long-term relationship. Make a list. These are the things that are really meaningful to me. These are what I want out of the relationship. And have that person create the list too. Learning what your boundaries are and when a person has crossed them is the basis for a healthy relationship with yourself and with others. Learning to say no, that is unacceptable and don't take it. In other words, there are certain things that you should demand out of a relationship and one of course is trust and the other is respect. And next week I wanna talk about respect, but these two things go hand in hand in having meaningful relationships. And in order to understand these, you have to understand your boundaries. Now, um, Stephen Covey is a really good uh, author in he understands boundaries, what people should work from a, a stable place of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And if you keep allowing people to do what is unacceptable, it erodes your self-esteem. So for me, this includes my relationship with God, being honest and trusting to do the right thing. And it will help you be the person you want to be if you have a spiritual guide of some sort. So I love the Remedy Be Courageous. It's a flower essence, which is an energy medicine, and it's made with glycerin, not alcohol. So it's really wonderful. You can give it to children, elderly. Uh, it doesn't interfere with drugs. Um, people who are uh, alcohol dependent, uh, basically Alcoholics Anonymous, love this because of the glycerin in it. And um, it supports you during times when courage is needed. Um, many people take it when they have to make a speech or ask for a raise or when they're approaching a difficult subject with somebody they really care about. So you can put two dropper fulls in like 10 ounces of water and sip on it while you're having the conversation. Um, this is uh, really, really good for when t fear creeps in. And we have been in a state of fear for the last nine months, which is to me unforgivable because there is no reason to be fearful of a virus that has a 99.9% .9 recovery rate. So um, I blame the media for promoting this fear. I blame our government for the mishandling of how things have gone 
um, and I've done videos on supporting the immune system and how you can protect yourself and possibly get rid of this fear. I'm going to leave you today with um, a lovely uh, message from Stephen Covey. And he says, if you want to be trusted, be trustworthy. So like this video, share, comment, and subscribe. You can click on the little bell and it will let you know when the next time I do a presentation, which is about once a week. And be sure to check out the description below for the links that I've mentioned and make this a fabulous day. And I hope that uh, the week is also a wonderful week for you. So for the health of it, this is Dr. Mary. And um, keep trusting those who deserve your trust.